Hi, welcome again to the big match, where today we have some superb action for you from three of yesterday's First Division games that between them produced 13 goals. Our main match comes from Chelsea, their battle with Manchester City. We're going to support that with Derby County against West Bromwich Albion and then Leeds United against Tottenham. So much ground to cover then, let's make a start down at sunny Stamford Bridge, where Chelsea now have a new one-man travelling show called Duncan McKenzie. And here is Duncan McKenzie, his first home game for Chelsea after skillful and spectacular stops along the way at places like Nottingham Forest, Leeds, and elect of Belgium, Everton, and now Chelsea. A colourful character who's been, uh, who's given a lift to the fans wherever he's been, and is now in this unchanged Chelsea side. It's the one that lost 3-2 at Coventry last week, where McKenzie himself scored. The defence still without Mickey Droy, who is still unwell, and it's a team that's won only once this season. Indeed, this Manchester City side has only one league win to its credit. A 3-0 victory against Leeds last week. And they now come without Roger Palmer, who scored twice that day, and without Brian Kidd, still recovering from a broken toe, and without fullback Kenny Clements, also injured. But as you can see, they are still a side with an immense amount of talent to it, and it includes one of their recent buys, Colin Viljohn, for so long a key player at Ipswich, but also for a long time kept out of the game by injury. It's good to see him fit again. It's a busy week for referee Clive Thomas. On Wednesday night, he was in charge of a UEFA Cup game in Bulgaria. But now we're all waiting for the first blast from Clive's whistle. And indeed, with that characteristic arm and leg movement, Clive Thomas gets this game underway. Chelsea in the all-dark strip, attacking the goal to our right. Manchester City today in white shirts with black shorts. And the ball back with Peter Vanetti. Significant game for Peter, really. His first game for Chelsea was against Manchester City back in 1960. It's a long time ago, particularly when you remember that in the Chelsea side that day it was Jimmy Greaves, who in fact scored in a 3-0 win. Now McKenzie. A little spur of acceleration that gave him a chance to pass here now this way. And it comes again to McKenzie. Jink inside, a delicate little cross, and a header by Gary Stanley that really should have gone in. And that would have been a brilliant opening thrust in his first match at Stamford Bridge for Chelsea for Duncan McKenzie. Beautiful skill, turning his man, a delicate cross, had City in trouble, Stanley was beautifully placed, and the header was really not what was required. Barnes losing touch there. They've pushed him onto that uh, far touchline against Ron Harris. Onside, Mike Shannon. Only a fraction, but he was. Is it the opening goal? It is. And Shannon has scored it for Manchester City. Well, a blow there for Chelsea. The little chip. That uh, the time run by Shannon was perfect. Just onside. Tucked it wide of Bonetti into the corner of the net. Chelsea nil, Manchester City one. McKenzie took that on his heel beautifully. Shot of power, but he couldn't beat Paul Fisher. Lock. This is better by Chelsea. That cross is no good for them, though. There's only Donaghy over there. In fact, it's a Chelsea throw. It just flicked the head of Donaghy. But the Chelsea crowd feeling, I think, that although they're a goal down, that they've got a side here that might do uh, something about it. Harris completely missed kicking. Hartford spreading it wide here, but Barnes won't get it. Gary Locke with the throw. Now Wilkins. Swain. Phil John. Hartford. Ron Futcher to Mike Shannon. Playing it inside for Hartford. A little gap there appeared for Asa Hartford. And the cross. Oh! Had to be turned away though by Benetti. I think 
they were expecting a cross to come back a little bit. It may just have clipped somebody and changed direction and Bonetti had to do a little bit of work on it. So it's a corner for Manchester City. And here's Watson up again. Shannon and Hartford there, but it's been played short. And now Barnes with room to look for the cross in towards that near post, easily taken by Bonetti. Hartford. Donaghy. That's a nice little ball played in there by Donaghy and Fucher very nearly got in there, Ron Fucher. Instead, Chelsea get it away with Wilkins. Played now for Locke. Here's Swain. Ball played nicely in there for Wilkins, but McKenzie. Now Stanley. Ron Harris. My word, it was into the side netting and... Uh, Chelsea a yard or so wide. Shannon, a nice header now for Butcher, and the second goal for Manchester City. And again, Chelsea caught out badly in defence. Really, that was the old one too. Shannon's delightful touch. Beautifully into the path of Ron Fulcher, absolutely clear. And blasting in past Bonetti for the second goal. Chelsea nil, Manchester City 2, Ron Fulcher that second goal. Made for him by Mick Shannon, who'd scored the first. Wilkins. Calling Langley towards him. And just look how Paul Fulcher was right there with him as well. And that Chelsea move is broken up with amazing ease. Shannon, Hartford, what a lovely move again to Ron Fulcher. And that's number three. What a beautiful City move. And Chelsea were destroyed by that. 44 minutes gone, Chelsea three down. Delightful in the play there with Hartford and Shannon involved. Leaving in the end, Ron Butcher absolutely in the clear. And between Benetti and the post, the goal number three. Chelsea nil, Manchester City three. So the last 30 seconds of the first half, the first half of disaster this for Chelsea, unless Langley can do something about this, and he hit that well. It stung Corrigan's fingers, but really didn't look like beating him. Well struck ball, though, by Tommy Langley. first half and indeed Clive Thomas blows the whistle what a brilliant first half for Manchester City Mike Shannon who scored the first goal made the second had a hand in the third as well but also Asa Hartford who number 10 who's had a tremendous game in the midfield prompting and probing all the while for Manchester City who really now have got this game well and truly within their grasp a half-time score then here at Stamford Bridge Chelsea nil Manchester City three Back to Stamford Bridge, where Manchester City have just kicked off again. Ryan Ron Fitcher doing that with his two goals in the last five minutes of that half. The first goals he scored for his new club, of course. And Chelsea, the three goals down, I suppose their memory might well go back to Main Road last November. And Manchester City thrashed them 6 2. But it's fair to say that Chelsea's record against City here at Stamford Bridge is pretty good. I think City have won only one more. On once in their last 14 visits. 
it's a record that they're going to improve on, I think, today. Ron Harris then with the throw for Chelsea. Wilkins. Stanley. Oh, Sway. Well, he turned superbly there. And if the shot had been more accurate and Chelsea had got back into the game right then, well, who knows? To Ron Fletcher, it'll oh, it's very nearly play for Paul Fletcher again. And Ray Wilkins with a chance to bring it away for Chelsea. A little touch for Langley. Played wide this time for McKenzie. A bit of space for him. Now, can he take on Donaghy? Who else can he take on? Well, he's got it to Lewington. Now Swain. Maybe a chance here for Chelsea all the way. And again, for the third time in this game, the ball is whacked into that side netting and half the crowd here have thought that it was in the goal. A wriggling piece of play there by Swain. Again, the shot into the side netting. Lewington with the throw for Chelsea. Now it's with Langley. That come for Swain. He played it wide there towards Lewington and Corrigan down. A bit more life about Chelsea in this second half, particularly in the city penalty area. Lewington's shot there causing Corrigan to go down, but that body, the big one, is right behind it. And here's Shannon. But hey, only half stopping him. Harris does the rest. A corner though for Manchester City. This time, but Eddie oh, it was a little too high for him. Hartford turning it back in again, and that trick for Ron Fletcher. That's his third, and Sin is fourth. Well, four times Peter Benetti's beaten. It's the end of the road for him at the end of this season. Retiring, and this will be one of the nightmares, I would think, as uh, Hartford dipped that ball in again. Fucho well placed to get down and hit it in. Chelsea nil, Manchester City four. And uh, his first goal is for his new club and he comes away with a hat trick. And they're warming up Ian Britton, our Chelsea at the moment. David Hay. And now here's Gary Locke. That's a good long shot in the game. <laughs> Yet again with that side netting. But something for the Chelsea fans to cheer. And they are taking off Ray Wilkins. Well, that's a sensational substitution. Chelsea captain going off. Can it be that he's not 100% fit or was it before the start? Ian Britton is on. Hard for the game. Uh, what about that for a ball? Beautiful ball played inside the ball back for Peter Barnes, and here's Fletcher. Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, he scored three, and he had maybe the best chance of all, and that would have been a really superb team goal. Hartford's lovely pass inside the fullback, a great piece of running by Peter Barnes, the good cross, good positioning also by Ron Fletcher. But alas for him, a shot that went over that Chelsea crossbar. In for Mackenzie. Straight through for Corrigan. Well, that was a bad ball by Peter Barnes. He's given that ball away two or three times in the last five minutes alone. Lock. Swain and again a good piece of shadowing by Paul Fucher. Now Stanley whacked that one in. Oh! Well, 
that goes down as a save because it's uh, given as a corner. That was a, a great shot there by Gary Stanley, but also the big man Joe Corrigan got down so swiftly again. And it's behind for the Chelsea corner, which Ian Britton is now going to take. Loaded deep towards Mackenzie. It's going to be another corner. Substitute. It was, a, was substituted, a pure substitution, there was no question of an injury. It's with Mackenzie now. Paul Carr running down into an offensive position again for Manchester City. Here's Peter Barnes, the touch for Asa Hartford, who's bobbed up everywhere, but particularly down that left flank. Barnes trying to flick it on again into the path of Hartford, this time for Fucher. Uh, Shannon won't get to that one. Gary Stanley, the long ball forward, and Tommy Langley taking it against Willie Donaghy. Stanley. And tipped over beautifully by Corrigan from Langley. Well struck by Langley. Well positioned by Corrigan. Figure. Britain with the corner. Owen just thumping it away. Only one up for Manchester City. That's Peter Barnes and Ron Harris. The support from Gary Locke on the far side. Laying it wide for Swain. That looked like a handball by Dave Watson. And I think Clive Thomas is trying to make up his mind whether it was deliberate or not. A doubt in his mind, I think, and uh, Dave Watson got the benefit of that doubt. Swain for Chelsea. And a header! And it's in the net! No! Yes, it crossed the line, and Barry Stanley will be credited with that one. the line before it was hooked out but there aren't many free headers that are allowed to by the Manchester City defence but Gary Stanley got one there just wide of the diving Corrigan against the post and fractionally over the line at least to bring a modicum of respectability for Chelsea here today Chelsea won Manchester City 4 with a quarter of an hour to go So they're going to bring on uh, Tony Henry, the substitute. In turn for Ray Lewington. Touched on first time uh, by Lewington inside this time. And, uh, it's a shot beautifully saved again by Joe Corrigan from Duncan McKenzie. And Peter Barnes is going off. And Tony Henry coming on. It's amazing, really. Two of England's men for Wednesday in Denmark, Ray Wilkins and Peter Barnes, both substituted here today. Gary Stanley with it, hit straight to Gary Owen. Well, there's a man with a nice warm feeling inside, Tony Book, Manchester City manager. Lock to Britain. A long ball forward. Uh, and Swain putting it in for Langley. Will this be two? No. Well, that's about the one and only time that Dave Watson has lost anything in the air in this game and uh, Swain did very well to get in behind him nodded it down and two had gone for that ball and it left uh, Langley in a bit of space but it was bouncing awkwardly for him and he couldn't master it hill kick referee looking at his watch and that indeed is the final blast on the Clive Thomas whistle and a very good performance indeed by Manchester City, an all-round team performance of the highest quality, there's no denying that.
They destroyed Chelsea above all with those two goals in five minutes before half-time. With Asa Hartford being uh, in absolutely brilliant form. And this fellow here, Ron Futcher, going away, carrying the ball as he ought to. A man who scored a hat-trick and helped his side to a 4-1 victory. Mike Shannon having scored the other goal for Manchester City. And Gary Stanley, the only reply for Chelsea. Problems for Chelsea and a smooth way ahead it seems at the moment for Manchester City. A final score then at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea 1, Manchester City 4. But what about that substitution of Ray Wilkins? It really is something that's almost unthinkable at Chelsea and yet it happened on a day when hardly anybody in the Chelsea side did themselves justice. And I asked Ray Wilkins about the substitution. Uh, were you injured? I wasn't injured, no. Obviously the manager thought I wasn't you know, doing well enough for the side so he's, he's brought me off. How did you feel about that, though, Ray? Uh, naturally, I was very, very disappointed. But uh, then again, it's it's the manager's decision. Were you surprised to see the number eight uh, card up there saying you've got to come off? Not really. No, I've you know anybody could could have been brought off because we weren't playing that well uh, individually as well as collectively. Uh, so I don't think I was surprised. I'm beginning to believe what Tommy Dockett said, I think. <laughs> well, that you can't tackle, That's you right. can't head, but you can pass. In fine science. <laughs> But uh, have you been substituted ever before as a Chelsea player? I don't think so, Brian. No, I think it's the first time. Yes. And what did Ken Chilito say to you afterwards? Did I you... haven't seen him yet. No. So nobody's given you any explanation of it? No. Do you feel yourself it was justified? Uh, I don't really know. I'd sooner not uh, make any comment on it. But you're not going to go and cause a fuss and bother? You're not... Well, I'm, I don't think I'm that sort of person anymore. I'd sooner just walk out, I think, than go and cause a fight. Yeah. Yes, indeed. But you were disappointed, uh, above all, with the result, apart from your own... Oh, definitely, yes. You know, we, we're not playing well at all at home. You know, we've scored one goal in three home games. And I think we've had something like eight goals scored against us, and mm. that's just not good enough. Yes. But, of course, the other business about the substitution, one last point, is with Ron Greenwood here, and with the Denmark game just, what, four days off now? I know. I, I don't know why Peter was pulled off, but I don't think Peter it's done Barnes. my... Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's done my case much good, anyway. You don't? No. Still, I don't know. I think he's probably got an overall view of the whole thing. Well, he watched us last week as well. I think I was just as bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. If it happens on Wednesday, good luck to you. Thank, you, Thank you very much indeed for coming and facing the Pleasure. cameras after that. Pleasure. Pleasure. Time. Time now to go, though, to our second game. And for that, we drop in on the Midlands clash between Derby County and West Bromwich Albion. Derby with fresh faces almost every game, it seems now. And now with Spurs' John Duncan in their lineup. And West Bromwich Albion, fresh from a UFA Cup victory in Turkey on Wednesday. ATV's cameras were at the baseball ground. The commentators, Hugh Johns, Derby County here in the white shirts. Lee Brown in there again. Derby's back four looking very, very shaky with the high ball particularly. Jerry Daly. Oh, much too long. while now. Oh, and a gift of a ball to Duncan. Yes! Oh, what quick thinking that was. John Duncan. Eight minutes gone. John Duncan celebrates his arrival here at Derby. What a killer goal. Superb thinking by John Duncan. John Wall Diabolical pass, aimed for Robertson. Duncan was in, so gotten off his line, immediately lobs it straight into the back of the net. Beautiful thinking by John Duncan. For real. Daly streaming through the middle. Carter down the right touchline now. Oh, he's done well. Good chip, Duncan! Steve Powell, 2 nothing. Well, Duncan has certainly electrified this derby crowd. But what about that? A little piece of skill from Steve Carter. Did two Albion men. Shipped it superbly to the far post. Duncan there, knocks it back, and Steve Powell finishes it off. Well taken out by Robertson. Carter fighting to get it back, and it's cutting it now. And... That was Robson following Steve Carter, gives the free kick to uh, Derby. Tony 
forgotten, asking for four as a, a wall. Now he's reduced it to two now. Robertson's in there as well. Three-man wall as Rioc is going to give the left foot some hammer. Pin! And Duncan's up there! And it hit the post and didn't go in. Free kick though. Free kick against Duncan for a foot up against the goalkeeper. But what about that for a blast from Bruce Rioc? Tremendous whack. I think you've got a slight deflection. Gotten in a lot of trouble. And Duncan penalised for foot up as he went in on the challenge. Determination on Ali Brown's face there. Cunningham will take the throw for Albion. Ali Brown. True. And now Cunningham. Cunningham gets Buckley. Got the cross in, Willie Johnston. Regis. Oh, yes. Zero Regis, right on the button, his third goal of the season. Beautiful, brilliant run by Laurie Cunningham down the right side. Didn't seem to have the room for the cross. Hit it long, Willie Johnson knocks it back across the face of the goals. And the big man, Cyril Regis, right into the roof of the net, a bullet header. Duncan helps it up. Statham is there. Oh, and a bad pass to Daly, who is going to score. Yes. 3-1. Well, West Bromwich Albion are wrapping up goals, gift wrap goals, and giving them to Derby. While they up to the first one. And here's now Statham giving Daly the third. Terrible back pass by Statham. And Jerry Daly, in like a shot, capitalises, tucks away Derby's third goal. Hooked away by Robson, in by Buckley, knocked out by Batson. And Daly, hit the ball! Where's that ball coming down? Behind. Well, a terrific snapshot from Jerry Daly from way out. Zipping away from Tony Gotten. Didn't know much about it. Thankful that the crossbar saved him. There's Carter for Darby. Uh, Duncan, the uh, Brown beating. Uh, Robertson, rather. Truick. Regis turning it inside. Here's Cunningham. Yes! Oh, yes! 3-2. Laurie Cunningham. Big, big open space in the middle of the park. Regis turns it back to Cunningham. What did he take? Two, three spaces. And as Middleton came off his line, a left for it swerver right into the corner of the net. 3-2 to Derby County, a real giveaway game there for West Brom, but some very good goals in with it too. But now we move on to criticism this week in the latest FIFA news. It's a report in the bulletin by Mr. Fritz Seipelt, a member of the FIFA Referees Committee, and it's about the standard of refereeing in the last World Cup. And one moment that he spotlights for particular criticism was the decision of Welsh referee Clive Thomas to blow the whistle for full time a fraction of a second before Brazil scored what would have been a winning goal against Sweden from a corner kick. And now we're into injury time. Nalino's kick is a good one. It's brilliantly put in. No. Oh, great protest. The whistle had already gone. The ball was in the back of the net, but as soon as that ball was kicked, the whistle went, and it doesn't count. Well, Mr. Seipelt also criticised another referee who gave a penalty on the word of a linesman when he was so much better placed to see that incident himself. And then he went on to say, and also the final whistle being given after a corner kick when the ball had only travelled a few metres through the air are things which should just not happen during World Cup matches. 
But um, I'm very shocked at this because, uh, as what you've said in FIFA, because um, it questions my dignity. And uh, all I really want to know from him, what does he want me and other referees to do? Does he want us to play more than the 90 minutes, um, which we had, we also had an injury, uh, injury time to it, um, or what's happening? Very confusing indeed, but you won't find the next action confusing because it's some great stuff from Elland Road, where Leeds United yesterday faced Tottenham Hotspur, Yorkshire Television's cameras were there, the commentators Martin Tyler, and a clash of colours for those of you watching in black and white, I'm afraid. Spurs, though, are in the slightly darker strip, with the black flashes on the front of their shirts, but wouldn't it have been so much easier if one of them had worn dark shorts. <laughs> test for Leeds in the middle of the field is of course how to cope without the creative talents of Tony Curry and taken by Peter Taylor now a chance for Spurs to open it up and beautifully taken the referee just looking across to check with the linesman but no doubt at all that Peter Taylor having taken it away from Flynn had the pace to leave Paul Hart and then it was one on one against the goalkeeper and Taylor kept his head and rolled it into the corner. Flynn taking on Perriman. Opponents to get through. That was Lorimer. That was the crossbar. Well, the odds were against Flynn, but he battled so well to get in the cross. And it was Peter Lorimer who met it. Danes was wrong-footed and was saved by his crossbar. Ball. It wasn't a very convincing punch, but it reached the edge of the penalty area. Stevenson, beautiful skills. The hand like handball by Lee, there was nothing wrong with the tackle. Harris, or Hankin, now Graham. through. Harris, the originator, too high for Hankin, but beautifully met on the volley by Arthur Graham. Ricardo Villa still really trying to adjust to a different style of English football goes off. And Jerry Armstrong, who was a Leeds United fan as a lad back in Northern Ireland, comes on on the ground where in fact he scored his first ever first division goal against Leeds the last time Spurs were here two years ago. immediately going forward and now Taylor well, that was a chance for Tottenham and for the third time in this half Colin Lee has got up well at the far post from crosses from the right and knocked the ball down cleverly it reached Taylor and the shot was high but too too hard too well struck Ardilas Armstrong, Perriman, just ten minutes left, on for Perriman, turning inside Frank Gray, back for Ardiles, and a goal surely for Colin Lee. the counter-attack Spurs get a goal which could be priceless to them and set up with a really fine driver goal by Ardiles Harvey couldn't hold it open goal for Lee 2-1 well that's it for this week another big match of course for you next weekend but this weekend really has left us with players with red faces in all three games that we've shown you it's an old football saying of course that every goal must be somebody's mistake but yesterday some of the mistakes were certainly bigger than others like the moment when Ron Fuchia scored his hat-trick goal against Chelsea, 
where Peter Bonetti was in trouble, and just count the Chelsea players who were around when Ron headed it in. It's with the kick. A deeper one this time. Bonetti, oh, it was a little too high for him. Hartford turning it back in again. A hat-trick for Ron Kutcher. That's his third and Sin is fourth. And the moment at Leeds when Brian Flynn allowed himself to be robbed by Tottenham's Peter Taylor. Taken by Peter Taylor. Now a chance for Spurs to open it up. And beautifully taken. But the real bloomers of the day came from West Bromwich Albion who presented Derby with two of their goals. Oh, and a gift of a goal. To Duncan. Yes! John Duncan. Duncan comes it up. Statham is there. Oh, what a bad pass to Daly, who is going...